It all started nine months ago when Rochelle Sitton's orchestra program had grown to the point where she needed to split classes. There were two orchestras, and then I had enough kids to have three orchestras, and now I have four orchestras. She's constantly getting booted out. I teach two orchestras here. I teach one orchestra up in the choir room, and my fourth orchestra meets on the stage. And we get booted to the cafeteria where we can't play, we just have to sit. My dad was the band director here in the 80s and the 90s. From the time I was a sixth grader, I spent a lot of time in this room. Between four orchestras and I don't know how many bands, probably three, that's more periods than there are in the day. So obviously this room is not enough. Right now, we get our instruments in here, we walk down to the auditorium, we rehearse, we come back, we put our instruments away, and how much time have we lost? I'm basically a teacher on a cart, teaching four orchestras in three different spaces. We need to create a secondary space that she can actually call her own. So we're revisiting this room going, okay, let's make this the secondary rehearsal space that it was meant to be. Thousands of kids come through here. Thousands. Uh, I play string bass. I play the flute and trombone. Practice rooms back there and even back there, I mean, you can't fit an orchestra in there even if you wanted to. I play in there and I can barely move around when I play too because I got kicked out of there because they needed it for more room for people. So this has always been what it is today. It's been a music library. Initially it was supposed to be a second rehearsal space, but between all the sound editing didn't work correctly and everything was messed up there. A better filing system in the library would be nice. I'm a librarian, I help with printing out music and stuff, so it'd be a better filing system back there, it'd be really nice. We have, like I said, the biggest library in the state of Montana, and we're out of room to even store music. I would bet hundreds of thousands of dollars in orchestra music we have back there. I have to get the exact number and everything and then go find it. Sometimes it's not put in the right spot too and then you have to pull it out and go print it. It's like an hour ordeal just to get music printed out for one band. I don't have enough file cabinets to put my music in so it's piled high out there. We have no storage for all my extra instruments so they're piled back there too. Absolutely crammed in there. No room at all. Bass player is behind a stack of tables and those layer stuff on a table. One of the bonuses of this back room is we could have two groups going at the same time. We can essentially cut the space needed for yeah. file storage in half and then this room is opened up to truly become a secondary rehearsal space again. She's not able to rehearse effectively. So that's the first stage of the project is getting the Wanger file storage system back here which is going to be about $50,000. We've got cage doors that are coming off at the hinges. Some of them don't even, they don't even have a door. You know, for over 50 years, um, this room has served its purpose. Things are worn out and that happens and that's normal. When these were done originally, instrument cases sizes were different and they just didn't fit correctly inside of the cabinetry. I know they want to add new lockers that have better security. You can even see some ceiling tiles that are off. Fitting all our music in and our instruments is kind of difficult sometimes. You know, reconditioning this door, soundproofing it, doing some light soundproofing inside of this room as well. This space has also not been touched since 1975. We're spilling out of cabinets. We don't have any space to put anything. The new cabinetry would allow for better storage for all of the stuff. Redo kind of these two spaces as well. Um, so this is our percussion closet. You step and you can feel the floor wanting to give. Kind of a menagerie of shelving and that sort of stuff. So this would be completely redone to where um, it's actual effective storage. Back before 1975, this was the auto shop. And so if you look on the outside of the building, you can still see the cutouts of where the bay doors were. So they bricked it all in and then made it a band room. Yeah, if you look out back, there might still be some footprints painted on the steps. And that's because if we showed up in our marching band uniforms and we didn't have black shoes on, that day you would get your shoes painted black out on the back step <laughs> so that you were in uniform. As I remember it, we used to have band at 8 o'clock in the morning and it was about 55 degrees in here. So I would imagine heating and cooling is up on the, on the plate too. This portion of the project is I believe around $84,000. A 
a $94,000 phase to go to a flat floor and then also take out the two closets completely to where we're just left with a massive rehearsal space in here. It'd actually be pretty awesome to remove the stairs. It makes it easier to, um, as a flute, we do put our instruments out straight and we don't have enough room in the front row. Well, I play bass. I mean, I take up as much room as you possibly could in here. I mean, without the steps, it would make my life way easier. I mean, I'm, I'm on two different levels when I'm playing, three, depending on what I have with me. We can flip the band where half the band will be facing each other. So the biggest difference with no stairs is the fact that we can do alternative rehearsal methods. So we can rehearse in a circle, we can do a flat floor, we can bring in risers when we want them to practice things like staging. On top of that, moving percussion equipment and large objects is a lot harder when stairs are involved. It's more accessible for our students or wheelchairs, uh, and so we want to make sure that you know, this is an all-inclusive environment for every person and we have the flexibility necessary to do what we want to do. Part of that final project of flattening the floor is, is putting in um, new tiling in the, in the ceiling and then possibly looking at acoustic tiling as well. So the school is helping, but as any, if everything goes, their pockets aren't as deep as what we need for our kids. These schools have so many things to try to think about and I think at, at times they go, well look, you've got this great program, it's still growing, you don't really need, but when in fact you look around and it's pretty dismal. And they're doing the best that they can to help support us and we've paired with the Billings Education Foundation and all of this and they've been huge supporters. Donation is anything that anybody can afford. It is 100% tax deductible. Senior High has always been a leader in the state of Montana and around the Northwest. So many people have gone through here and they should come back and help us out. My kids know I'm a crier, that's okay. We have instruments pouring out of cabinets. We have too many kids and not enough space. And it's a good problem to have, but it's a problem nonetheless we need to solve. When the water comes in and hits our instruments and our files, yeah, that's a problem too. So yeah, just help us out, help us to be proud of what we have.